How's it going everyone? Justin here with My Man Justin's Collectible Emporium and I'm your man for Pokemon cards, card analysis, and Pokemon investment consulting. Today I'm going to do a video that's kind of alongside my Pokemon metaphysics and philosophy series, but I wanted to talk about how the cost of Charizard Pokemon cards relate to the metaphysical ideas of value and of the idea of relationships in a general sense. So I think this is an interesting idea, and I'm sure there's someone out there that is gonna be able to take this to heart. So first, let's just talk about this Shining Charizard PSA 8. So this is a card, it's probably worth, say, um, you could get $1,500 for it, right? So in, in this example I'm gonna give, I'm, I'm gonna talk about how going to different people and the different reasons they would have for the value they would give this to you. So if you gave this to someone and you said, take it to the first random person on the street and go up to them and offer them this card and see what they would give it to you. Well, if it was a person that has never been interested in Pokemon, um, they just see it as kind of, you know, a, a cool looking piece of cardboard. Maybe they'd, they'd, they'd give you five, five dollars. They'd be like, oh, okay, well here, I got five dollars in my pocket. Maybe it's worth five bucks. Here you go. And that's how much that person would give you for this card, right? Maybe, and they've probably even heard of Pokemon and they're, and they're thinking like, oh, well, that's something like uncool. Like, I, I don't, I don't really want that. You know, maybe they'd give you nothing for it. Maybe a lot, a lot of people do that. It's like, oh, Pokemon is for nerds or, or, you know, that's not cool. So they would offer you, say, $5 at the most. Then the next person you went up to to offer this to was a person that knows about Pokemon and even collected when they were a kid and it has some nostalgic value, so they, they see some value in it. It's got some nostalgia. Oh yeah, I collected that when I was a kid. Um, but they haven't been interested in Pokemon since um, and they haven't been you know, aware of what's going on in the Pokemon world and it's completely unfamiliar to them. And you know, maybe they would offer you what it was worth to them way back then. So, you know, this card, when it came out, it was probably 50 bucks. So that's how much that person would offer you. They, they would give you 50 bucks. Then the next person that you would go, could go take this to would be say an honest shop owner that understands that it's a valuable card, but doesn't really have any passion in themselves for it. They only look at it as a way to make a profit. They're just wanting to use it for something else, but they'll be honest with you and they'll give you say 50% of the value. So, you know, they would give you say 500 bucks for the card and that would be the, the honest store owner. And, and it's good to note too that the, the honest store owner, they, they would tell you what, what the value might actually be, but they just themselves wouldn't be worth, it wouldn't be worth them, they wouldn't be willing to actually pay what they believed really was the true value of the card because they had other motives for it and they didn't really love the card in the way that they were passionate about it. Now, the next person you could take it to would, would be, say, a dishonest uh, store owner. So this person would try to lie to you about the value of the card. They would, they would know about the value of the card, but they would want to lie to you about it, say, oh yeah, it's just kind of a standard Pokemon card, it's nothing special. They would also not really have any true passion for the card. They would also be wanting to use it just to make a profit out of it but they would also try to cheat you out of the true value. They wouldn't want to tell you what it really is worth and they want to make some money out of it. So they're going to try to lie to you and cheat you out of it so they can make more out of it. The last person that you go to to try to sell this car to is a person that is a collector. They collected them when they were young. They have nostalgic value. They've been uh, involved in the Pokemon community. They've seen it evolve over time. They've appreciated it. They have grown with it. They have um, a real a real passion for it and they want it for their own collection. They, they don't want anything uh, with it to use it for anything. They simply want to appreciate the card and this is the person that you are going to be able to get its full realized value from. And that is the person that's gonna pay $1,500. So just to recap, you got the person that'll pay nothing to $5. You got the person that'll pay 20 to $50. You got the person that'll pay 500. You got the person that'll pay 200. But that one person 
that really appreciates it, that doesn't want to use it, but just appreciate it, that is the person that you are going to get true, the true real value out of this card from. So of course, I, I'm as a pragmatist and a metaphysician, metaphysician a bit, um, I also look at this in the way of relationships, of course. Um, and this is, this is something that has to do with pe the way people have relationships. And, you know, I've had relationships in the past where I've had to realize that the person, you know, the person that I was dealing with wasn't the person that saw this card in the way that they would give it the, the, the true value and the full value for it and wanted to appreciate it and truly was passionate for it. So that's something we can also see in our real lives. And I think it's an interesting lesson that we can see out of the cost of Pokemon cards because in themselves, they are just a piece of artwork, a piece of media it communicates. Like I've said, there's a lot of um, uh, mythological uh, structures that are embedded. The idea of the dragon, something that the hero confronts to progress through their journey. I I've talked about that in my past videos, but in, in this way, we can see it as a way in how we interact with relationships and how people also value other people and you know not selling yourself short to the person that wants to lie to you about your value or wants to undervalue you want to find that person that is going to give you the full price because they really do appreciate it and are passionate about it so a little motivational video for you all today just wanted to share that with you I have another collection that I'm going to be putting up and I have a, I'm doing another video. Uh, one of the subscribers gave me a really great idea about the premiums with different types of grading uh, companies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through listings for specific cards and see what they sold for with BGS, CGC, I think it was called, and PSA. And I'm going to see what kind of pre premiums you get for each company. So I think that'll be something interested you all be interested who are interested in the collecting and investing aspect of Pokemon. So stay tuned. I'll be doing that video and then I'll be doing another video about this new collection. I got some really cool cards. I'll see you on the next broadcast. Thanks.